fossil fuels from deep and under the earth and putting it into the atmosphere, we're pretending that that, ha that, that that has no probability of a bad outcome. And the entire scientific community is saying, obviously, it has, it, it's going to have a bad outcome. Obviously. <laughs> you just, you're changing the chemical constituency of the atmosphere. So, um, so it's really up to people and, and governments to put, to put a price on, on carbon and, and then automatically the right thing happens. It's, it's really straightforward. Um, what do we do with the carbon that's already up there? I actually think we can manage with the current carbon level or even a little bit higher. Um, it, it, it's, um, and this is going to sound, um, sound like I'm backtracking, but there's actually an argument that more carbon in the atmosphere is, is actually good, but up to a point. So <laughs> we might actually arguably have been a little carbon starved. If you go back 200 years ago um, and say, okay, well, a few hundred years ago, we're like, we had like 280, 290 parts per million of carbon. We're probably a little carbon starved. Now we're about 400, just past 400 mark. I think somewhere in the 400s, probably okay. Uh, we don't have to worry about sequestering carbon or anything like that. But now, if this momentum keeps going and we start going up to 600, 800, 1,000, 1,500, um, that's where things get really squirrely. Um, and uh, the, the sheer momentum of the world's energy infrastructure is leading us in that direction. Um, it's very, so it's just very important that the the public and the government's pushed to, to ensure that the, the correct price of carbon is paid. Um, so that, that will be the thing that, that, that matters. Um, yeah.